and I'm going to get started because it's absolutely freezing. It's minus six this morning, minus six degrees here down in the village of Tushan. So I think it's the first time I'm doing my vineyard ramble in sub-zero temperatures and just thank goodness that the wind isn't blowing at all. But let's just get our bearings. So in front of me, uh, you can see the Chateau d'Aguila. It's rising up in the distance. Behind that, we've got the Mediterranean. And we've got Porta Les Corbières. Moving around. Hi, Warren. Great to see you. Uncle David in Yatton. Chief grape picker. Yeah, it's really cold. Um, so panning around, we've got the Rocher de Van Gros over here. And uh, next to that, we have the Totevel Tower just moving around. Uh, behind the Totevel Tower, we have the town of Perpignan. Uh, so Perpignan, down in the PO, Pyrenees Orientales, or uh, Catalonia. And the wonderful beaches, do any of you know uh, Collioure, Bagnols, Cerbère? That's all about an hour and a half in that direction. So we're looking over to the Roussillon. We're on the Languedoc Roussillon border here. Ooh, and it's very cold. It's minus. Hi, Mum. Hello, Mum. Mum and Dad. It's minus six degrees this morning in the vineyard. So um, it's really, really, really chilly. And first time I'm doing a ramble in sub-zero temperatures. Temperatures. So just um, moving around behind here, as you can see, I'm in a bit of a dip, but here we have Diane. Diane was amazing this morning. Diane started first time. So big pat on the back for Diane. And then uh, this is Sebastian's car. We're going to be catching up with Sebastian in a minute. And over there, just in the distance behind the car, you can just make out Tushon. So Tushon, this is a village of Tushon where I live, 800 people, and it's just nestling below the Tosh Mountain. So the big Tosh Mountain, which rises to 917 meters um, above sea level, a big limestone mountain. Ooh, just heard a gunshot. Somebody's out shooting. So it's, it's Thursday, isn't it? So it's not um, wild boar shooting day, but people must be shooting just randomly in the vineyards. Um, and then the back you can see Puy de la Gardie. And then let's take a look. Oh, it's a bit slow motion today because my fingers are freezing off. But let's just take a quick look at the tea towel. So have you got your tea towel or your torchon? in French at the ready. Yeah, Dan, I'm, I'm glad you're sorry that you're late. You haven't missed much. You've just missing sub-zero temperatures down here in the village of Touchon, but great to have you with us. Whoa, it's cold. Right, so I'm gonna continue as long as my fingers function, but here we are on the tea towel. Now, if you've got your tea towels out, this vineyard isn't actually on the, vin uh, on the tea towel because it's one of John Marks. So it's a John Mark, um, Right, get my bearings. So Jean Marc Vineyard, and we are literally we've come out of Touchon um, along this little road here. So we've gone past Fortales, we've gone past Les Cruzels, which are two tiny ones of mine. We haven't quite got as far as La Roc, so we're about here. And it's Jean Marc. It's called Rock Alary, Rock Alary, and it's one of his biggest vineyards. It is cold. It's so cold. It's one of his biggest vineyards, but the sun, come on sun. Let's get some suns on the screen. Get some sun, not sunscreen, but sun on the screen. Oh, to bring that sun over. It's just trying to peek through the clouds. So uh, it's Rock Alary. It's uh, mainly Syrah here and it's Jean-Marc's biggest vineyard. So it's four hectares all in one little plot. And I've come down here this morning because Sebastian, uh, is actually mending wires every year. You can see these are trellis, so they're on wires. So every year, um, some of the wires just get cut either with a harvesting machine or pruning, and uh, we need to repair them. So Sebastian preferred to do that rather than pruning this morning, and I don't blame him. And he showed me something quite interesting here. Be careful, it's so, like, so slippy. Or, it's, yeah, it's just icy. Um, you see the little sarmang or the branch on this pole here. So every row that has a sarmang on it like this is one where he needs to repair the wire. So there's one here 
I can see another one about two along down here and then there's another one up here but anyway it was lovely to see so many of you with Brad the other night uh, we had a great chat uh, Jean-Marc really really enjoyed it as well so if you missed that you can catch up on Brad's IGTV Brad if you're there if you want to put up the details and uh, as it's so cold I thought it wouldn't be funny to look at some French expressions as I walk down to see Sebastian some French expressions for when it's really cold so are you ready for a bit of French this morning so one that I really like is il fait un froid de canard un froid de canard so froid is cold de, de of a canard is a duck so it's as cold it's a duck cold or cold of a duck duck cold well I got up this morning and it was duck cold and um, froid de canard apparently that originates from hunt shooters when they used to go um duck hunting duck shooting in the winter it was always in the winter month and they got really cold so um froid de canard and um, froid de canard uh, and then <laughs> I, was just, I was having a real laugh with Jean-Marc this morning uh, over other expressions. Do any of you know any other expressions like un froid de canard, duck cold? Well, there are a couple in French, but they're really funny. Um, anybody heard of this one? On se caille les miches. So if there's any French listeners here, <laughs> on se caille les miches. On se caille les miches. It's basically the equivalent of freezing your tits off. Oops, I didn't say that, Mum and Dad. But that is, it's that cold this morning. I'm really feeling on se caille les miches. We definitely are as we're walking through this crispy, frosty Syrah Vineyard of Jean Marc. I am caille. Sakai, there you go. Yeah, it's Sakai, you got half of it. And if you add on MH du Puy, add on Les Miches, um, that's a win. Oh, so um, let's concentrate on this. So, and then just one more, but this is getting even more anatomical, masculine anatomy this time. I don't know if I can say this. Um, on se pelle le Jean. So, any French people with me today? The final cold phrase this morning, on se pelle le jong. So I say it slowly, on, as in one, se pelle. Se pelle means to peel. It's almost written the same. On se pelle, on se pelle le jong. So on se pelle le jong. And the jong in French is a bulrush. Okay, so I'll leave that to your imagination exactly what that means. But we are, well, I'm not Sepel Le Jong, but I bet Sebastian is down here. Anyway, so that was some nice little winter phrases. Um, oh, somebody out for a swift walk up here. And let's go and catch up with Sebastian because I've seen he's been laying out some strings and doing bits and pieces so we'll just see what he's actually up to and I was saying it's minus six here this morning it's absolutely freezing so we've uh, it's a, a duck cold and froid de canard and I me caille miche so here's Sebastian morning Sebastian morning. Ooh, how are you Fine. <laughs> so uh, just let Sebastian get on with it and keep warm. But Sebastian's been with us for oh over five years now, definitely. And his dog Pina, as in Pina Colada. And Sebastian's just repairing wires that get cut during uh, either either the machine harvesting or during pruning accidentally. So he's just attaching in. He's feeding back the wire that's been broken through the hoops anybody has any questions please put them in the question box and if my fingers haven't frozen off i will be pressing that button a little bit later on and so we'll just follow 
And oh yes, another thing I was meaning to tell you ramblers is that for Saturday, so I am going to do another ramble on Saturday during lockdown. I just thought that would be a nice idea to break up the weekend a little bit. But I'm going to do it, I think, I'm going to try it at five o'clock in the afternoon. So basically tea time. So if you pour yourselves a cup of tea, five o'clock Saturday afternoon, um, then you can join me for another ramble, an afternoon ramble on Saturdays. Oh, I think Sebastian's a bit cold. Um, and that means we can all have a lovely cup of tea together. And I think at that time we'll, we'll look back at the history and what we've seen during the week as well. So it'll just be a nice, gentle little ramble that we're doing on Saturday, five o'clock. That's five o'clock French time, so it's four o'clock UK time. Here comes Nina, oh, not Nina, Pina. Oh, and let's, uh, it's afternoon. It would be what? Yes. And that is another advantage, Lisa, is that I think at five o'clock it's almost time that we could have a little sip of wine, too. So uh, I'll be tasting something five o'clock on Saturday. It also means that our friends from the States and Canada can hopefully join us, too. And it's not midnight. Um, so hopefully they can join us on one of our rambles, too. Oh, it's, it's not getting any warmer. Let's just see where that sun so 4 p.m. That's it, William. Four, thanks for all your questions, William. I will get back to you. And yes, that's 4 p.m. UK time. So on Saturday, 4 p.m. UK time. Oh, that sun. It's Yeah, you're coming for a drink. Excellent, Mia. So the sun's just trying to peep through here. But I think it's so cold it really doesn't want to. Oh, sunshine. We could all do with a bit of sunshine. It's so unusual to see frost in my vineyards. It's so pretty see the frost here yeah pina's got a nice warm coat i know lucky her i might steal it off her so frost on the vines this morning just so not a sight we see that often here so let's see how uh, i think i don't know how sebastian's moving his fingers see how he's getting on here so it's not as easy as it seems threading back through these wires because they all get caught up Ça y est, t'as trouvé les deux bouts? Ouais. Ah, OK. <laughs> so I asked Sebastian if he'd found the two ends. He goes, no, it's not just two ends. There's about three, four or five ends to this one. So it's been cut in a couple of places. And he's just feeding through. On peu, ouais. So when he sees a break, he threads through the two ends of the wire and then clasps it with this, like, big... Um, pliers that's it and so that hopefully squeeze it again here squeeze it down watch your fingers and then that secures so that's mended that little break in the wire so oh and then he's doing something else so that's the little break in the wire that's been mended and then with this ooh, with this machine here, let's see what happens next. Thread it through there. Oh, it's like a big pulley. Oh, I need to get out of the way. And then he's heaving. Oh, I, I see what he's doing because there's a wire coming from the other direction. And now he needs to get those two wires to join together. So it's probably, this is the final connection in this wire and the the rows here are pretty long they must be almost a kilometer long so now he's just brought the two ends together with this rope pulley sort of rope and i imagine he's going to do the same thing again here with the little stapler uh, when he finds so it cuts a bit off so that they meet and then he's going to get one of those little metal things oh my fingers Good job I've got my lovely gloves on this morning, but the, the fingers peeking out here are pretty cold. Oh, so uh, Sebastian's taken his gloves off. <laughs> Down the really gone. <laughs> so that he can get that. And again, the same thing that he did a bit further down, just putting the connector in there and then pulling the wires. And then he's going to clasp that's it. He's going to clasp. Here we go. 
so he's clasped that's it uh, with the pliers squeezing the little metal connector so that's going to hold the two wires so mending and that's his job for this morning and then once he's done that uh don't know what happens let's see what happens next crimps that's a nice word robin crimp so he's got and he's got a crimping machine fantastic parfait <laughs> brilliant and that's another super another 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 so that's that row mended so on peut enlever le sarment de cette right so we can take the branch off this row this one's been mended pina's off going back into Tushong over there she's had enough and Sebastian's going to move on merci beaucoup Sebastian <laughs> oops and um, Sebastian's going to move on now to the next row the sun how's the sun doing il y a le soleil qui va se lever peut-être mais bon <laughs> oh, ouais, ça serait mieux ouais. oh, let's have a look at your question so a question from Nick. Yes, I failed to mention which wine Jean-Marc makes from this vineyard. So Jean-Marc uh, makes his Syrah. So he has 100% Syrah in his Herbarium range. So it's an organic vineyard, organic range of wines. And it's called Herbarium Syrah. Lovely, light, easy drinking style of Syrah. Um, and that one not available yet in the UK, but we're working on it. And... Uh, hi Dan, good to see you. Question from Dan: Is good frost for the vines? Uh, start again. Is frost good for the vines? So, um, yes, it can be. You don't want too prolonged time of that didn't make sense. But you don't want too long a time of cold weather, uh, like really sub-zero. That can be could be quite damaging for the vines. But a little bit of frost like this is perfect. And one of the main reasons this year is: Do you remember I mentioned? the uh, new pest that we've had with climate change we've it's getting warmer so we have a new pest in the vineyard it's called cryptoblabus which is a type of moth which lays its eggs in the grape literally just before harvest now the the best way to get rid of cryptoblabus is with a good hard frost during the winter so i think we've had that this morning so hopefully uh, that should prevent any damage from the cryptoblabes uh, moth in the following harvest. So fingers crossed for that. And generally, yes, for the vines, it, it's no damage. Doesn't cause any damage. Um, and one from Grumpy Amazon. Lisa, does that get done in every vineyard? And, and then I read the next question. I think you mean the repairing the wires. Um, it can happen. Uh, yeah, you always get some damage in the vineyards on, on the trellising systems in the winter, just through general uh, sort of pruning and harvesting machines. Some of the wires do break. And uh, yes, yeah, so it is quite a lot of our winter work is going around the vineyards and just checking and as Sebastian said this morning he's checked earlier on when he was pruning every time he saw a row that had a wire that needed mending he's put a little stick at the end of the row so that he remembers which one it is so there's the stick on the end so he's off down this row and as you can see this is probably the most difficult vineyard we have because of the length of the rows this is the vineyard with our longest length of rows. It's rock gallery and the rows must be, I don't know, half a kilometre perhaps long. So mending the wires, as Sebastian said, they're usually broken in a couple of places. So it's not just one mend, it's a couple of mends down there. But I know Sebastian's waiting for the sunshine. I am too. And no more questions. So hello. Um, everybody i see some of you just joining us so cara's dad hi good to see you just say so we're just finishing off from a very cold minus six degrees chilly vineyard this morning here in tushan so i'm just off to go and warm up but my video will be immediately on igtv so please catch up there and then just as a reminder i will be back on saturday so saturday uh five o'clock french time so four o'clock uk time 
join me for a vineyard ramble, an afternoon vineyard ramble. Hopefully it'll be a little bit warmer by then. And pour yourselves a cup of tea, get the biscuits out, get the cake out, mum and dad. And uh, join me on Saturday. So, it's only zero in Woking, I'm Vivian. Lucky you. So, have a great day everybody. Uh, remember those expressions. Um, okay, first one to put up an expression. One of the expressions about how cold it is. So can anybody remember one of those expressions on how cold it is? And uh, I am sending out wild herbs. So wild herbs to the first person who comes up with one of those expressions on how cold it is. See you on Saturday, Dan. Um, and they will be sent out to you. I'm not quite sure how long it's taking at the moment with the uh, changes in the customs forms that has to come through. But they, I will put them in the post. Thanks, everybody. Yes. Oh, foie. Yes, cold. And the expressions answer Kylie Miss Brilliant Lisa. Did you write that one down? Are you going to use it a bit later on? <laughs> That's so funny. Lisa, I'm sending you definitely some wild herbs for that. So some lovely organic dried rosemary on its way to you. And foie de canard as well. That was it. Foie de canard. Foie de canard. Yeah, excellent. Well, it is. And on that note, I'm off to warm up. So thanks very much, everybody. On Saturday, I'll be um, bringing you up to date with the history. We got up to 1907 on the history and the viticultural crisis back in 1907. And we'll be looking at the effects of that on Touchon and what actually happened following 1907. So um, be great fun catching up with you on Saturday. Bye, everybody. 